ABC inventory analysis is a method for classifying inventory according to some measure of importance and allocating control efforts accordingly. It's also known as a Pareto analysis, where a vital few amount of SKUs represents a high percentage of the total dollar value of the inventory. Your A items are very important, your B items are moderately important, and your C items are the least important. You're also going to have the most amount of C items, the middle amount in your B items, and you're going to have the least amount of your A items when it comes out to the total amount of items that are determined, whether they are classified as an A, B, or a C in your system. The idea with ABC analysis is to establish inventory policies and controls that focus resources on the few critical inventory parts and not the many trivial ones. It's not realistic to monitor inexpensive items with the same intensity as the very expensive ones. So as an example, uh, when I worked for a manufacturing firm, we would buy very expensive printed circuit board assemblies that were hundreds of dollars and had very long lead long lead times. We also bought screws, literally just screws that you would help to make the power supplies that we made internally. So on the one hand, we had A items, which were our printed circuit board assemblies that we bought that were custom from a local manufacturer. And then we bought screws, which were another kind of raw material that were needed to make uh, our finished good item, but they were literally just screws. The screws had maybe a one week lead time. And if they were out of inventory, we could literally just go to Home Depot and buy them. So the C items, the trivial um, items, they were not expensive, they were easy to manage the inventory, they would be classified as C's, and our more expensive items would be classified as an A, and we would manage the inventory differently using various different inventory management tactics, but it all was derived from the ABC code that we classified it as by doing this exercise. So your ABC guidelines. There's general guidelines for ABC analysis and, AB and, de and determining which items are going to be classified as an A, a B, or a C. A items account for the large dollar value, but there's a relatively small percentage of the total items. So it's only going to be 5 to 15% of your total items, yet it can be anywhere from 60 to 80% of the total dollar value. Your B items are your medium, uh, medium dollar value items, and they're about 30% of the total items. They're about 15% of the total dollar value. Your C items account for a small dollar value, but they are a large percentage of the total items. So they might be 50 to 60% of your total items, but they may only be 5 to 15% of the total, total dollar value. So when we do our analysis, you're going to see there's not that many A items, but they're expensive. They're about 5 to 15% worth. And our C items, there's lots of them, but their total dollar value is anywhere from 5 to 15%. So this is what a distribution of what the ABC analysis would look like um, using an ABC analysis. Now you can see on the bottom right of the screen, um, I oversimplified the ABC classification that I have historically used. I keep it easy. I keep my A items as 80% of the total dollar value, which generally represents about 10-ish percent of the total items. My Bs I use as 15% of the total dollar value, and that generally works out to be around 30% of the total items. My C items, which are only 5% of the total dollar value, many times will come out to be about 60% of the total items. So I use 80-15-5. Your organization may choose to use different numbers. You could use 70, 20, 10, if that was what your organization decided to do. And the example that we're going to go through together is even less dramatic than what I have done with 80, 15, and 5. So um, the dollar value that you determine of what is A's, what is B's, and what is C's is either your decision or someone in your organization's decision. And then you will do the analysis to match what you have determined as your ABC classifications. So here are the steps to completing an ABC analysis. Step one, we're going to calculate the annual dollar value, and that's just the unit price for the SKU times your annual demand. Step two is sort by decreasing order for annual dollar value. We'll do it in Excel. 
and I'll do a separate video walking through everything that we're going to do together here in Excel. We're going to calculate the sum of the total annual dollar value for all of the SKUs. Step four, we're going to calculate the percent annual value per SKU. Step five, we'll calculate the cumulative total, total dollar value, which is the unit annual value plus everything previous to that. We're going to calculate the percent annual cumulative value. And then we're going to assign an ABC code per our company policy. And again, company policy will be given to you not only in this course, but most of the time in your professional careers as well. I like to use 80, 15, and 5, but not everyone uses that same classification methodology. Okay, step one, our ABC analysis. We have all of our SKUs. You can see we have a unit price associated to every one of those SKUs. And then there's the annual demand for each one of those SKUs. So there are 14 different part numbers, 14 different SKUs, and that totals 91,000 units that are purchased on an annual basis. So there's 4,690 of SKU number 236-W, and they pay $146.25 every time they buy it. So the annual demands 4,690. You add up all of these demands and you get 91,005 um, annual demand of the 14 different SKUs that are out there. So our next step is to take the annual dollar value and we're going to calculate that by taking the unit price, which is given, multiplied by the annual demand, which is also given. Now, in this example, I have already sorted them in decreasing annual dollar value. So you can see the number one item, the highest priced item, uh, comes in at $693,000. So that's number, that's SKU number 635-P, and it's almost $700,000 worth, worth of their purchases. As you work your way down the list for the other 14 items, you can see item number 479-J. It's only $3.50 each, and they buy $9,000 per year. So the total annual dollar value for that item, that SKU, is $31,500. So they're already in sorted by decreasing annual dollar value. And when you add up all of the total annual values, you get $3.5 million worth of purchases on these 14 SKUs. A couple things to keep in mind. Your highest price item, and this example is uh, 867-I at $245 a piece. Just because it's your highest price item does not make it your highest annual value because you have to take into consideration your annual demand. So your annual demand multiplied by your unit price gives you your annual value. And sometimes even your least expensive items, if they have a really high annual demand, can be A items as well. They can have a high annual value. Okay. Our next step, oh, I just went over that one. That's how we are calculating out that 693,515. You're taking the $99 multiplied by 6,970. Okay, our next step is we want to determine the annual percentage uh, value, dollar value for each SKU, for each SKU. So we're gonna take the annual dollar value divided by the total annual dollar value and multiply that by 100. So in the last step, we calculated all of the annual values, we added them all up, and we got $3.5 million. To calculate the percent annual value, we're going to take $693,000 divided by 3.5 uh, million. When we do that and multiply it by 100%, it's 20% of our total annual value. Our next step, going back one step real quick. We will do this for every single item. You have to do it for every single SKU. And when we do this in Excel, we can do it very fast. So we can go and we can create formulas, which I will show you how to go and, and calculate this out. And it'll take about one to two seconds to do all of them. And it doesn't matter whether you have 14 SKUs or 14,000 SKUs using Microsoft Excel, it'll take about the same amount of time. Okay, so our next step is now we're gonna figure out the cumulative dollar value. And all we're going to do is add up the cumulative amounts of the first item and the second item to get our cumulative total dollar value. 
So for this first example, we're going to take $693,000. We're going to add it to $685,000, and we're going to get our cumulative value of $1.379 million. We will work our way all the way down this spreadsheet, adding up the previous item's cumulative value with the annual total dollar value, and that'll give us a new total cumulative dollar value. One thing to keep in mind is as you complete this analysis, your very last item should equal your total annual value. So $3.5 million and $3.5 million as the cumulative amount they match. So I know that I've done it correctly. Okay, next step is that we are gonna be taking and calculating out all of the percent annual values. Okay, so we're going to work our way down and we're gonna add up. The first item, we're gonna take $693,000 divided by 515, uh, $693,000 and divided by 3.5 million. And that gives us a 20% annual value. But we wanna find the cumulative annual value. So in this case, we're going to take the cumulative total dollar value for each SKU and divide that by the $3.5 million. So for the second SKU, which is 1.379 million, we would then divide that by 3.5 million and that would give us 39%. The other way we can do this is to take 20% plus 19% gives us 39%. 39% plus 16% gives us 55%. So you can do it that way as well if you don't wanna do all the math. Either way, it better equal 100% at the very bottom to make sure that you have done it correctly. So now you've done your ABC analysis for these 14 different SKUs. You've calculated out the annual value per item. You've calculated out the percent purchase price for every annual value. You've calculated out the cumulative dollar value for these 14 SKUs. And you've calculated out a percent annual value when you add up all of the different SKUs. So you're going to get to $3.5 million, and that is 100% of the SKUs and the spend that you have available. Now, if our company policy was to have all A items be 55% of the value, all B items be the next 37%, and all of our C items be the remaining 8%, then this would be the breakdown of our ABC classification. We would have three items that were coded A. We would have five items coded as B, and then we would have six items that are coded as C's. So three items, five items, and six items is how we would code these 14 different SKUs between A's, B's, and C's. So ABC analysis, we have coded everything generally as an A, a B, or a C. But there's other criteria that can be used besides just dollar value when we're classifying products as an A, a B, or a C. I've used the letter X before as well. Uh, that's when we're doing anticipated engineering changes. We think that something might be coming obsolete soon, then we would code it as an X. And the reason we would do that is that my buyers or my planners would be very cautious going forward to make sure that they did not buy too many um, versus their MRP requirements. They would buy almost exactly what they needed because they knew there was going to be an anticipated engineering change coming forward. You can also code uh, parts uh, in, in other ways. Uh, many times when we had delivery or quality problems, uh, we would classify something as an A because we would want to manage it more closely. So you can override uh, something that is mathematically calculated out to be a B or a C item, and you can manually change them to an A item if you believe that there's going to be delivery problems or quality problems, or that item's just got a high unit cost, whatever it may be, you can change your ABC classification code so that you can better manage that item or better manage that inventory. Um, I have historically always used A, B, C, and X, um, and X's were my red flag that let me know something was going to be changing. And then there's also policies that can uh, be employed uh, based off of the ABC classifications. So more emphasis on supplier development for A items, tighter physical control for A items, and more care in forecasting A items. These are absolutely things um, that I would do for the items that are classified as A versus items that are classified as C's. Um, for supplier development, 
we would really, really manage our suppliers to make sure that they had high quality, high on time delivery, and that we had good inventory uh, processes in place with them, like a Kanban system or a consignment system. Um, and because we would want to make sure based off of the high dollar value that we always had those items in inventory, that we had low amounts of inventory, but they were, they were always there when we needed them. Tighter physical inventory control for AI items. It's unfortunate, but sometimes high value items walk away, especially in retail or in um, manufacturing settings that use high priced commodities. Uh, many, many years ago when uh, copper uh, pricing was going through the roof, uh, we had uh, copper components in our warehouse that were disappearing. And unfortunately it was employee theft, but people were taking those copper products and they were selling them on the market um, and for the scrap value. So you've got to have tighter physical inventory controls for AI items. And then more care and forecasting AI items. Every item is important, but your AI items are expensive. They generally have longer lead times, and therefore you want to make sure that you always have the AI items there when you need them.